Hi guys, a short video about uh, mathematics. Um, as you've seen, uh, I will, I'm able to create lifelike models of atoms. These are the real shapes of atoms. Uh, why? They comply with, uh, say this is carbon, diamond shape. The shape, uh, this big ball, without the spikes it would be, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, number 80. Mercury, so mercury is liquid at room temperature since it's a ball. Uh, there are numerous uh, examples how the shape of an atom uh, reflects to a bigger object uh, or to uh, chemical properties. You will find them in my model, no problem. So it complies with, it, with, with uh, the chemical properties. Um, it also complies with uh, the, the, the number of valence, the number of chemical bonds, the number of protons in the outer shield. It complies with uh, an atomic weight, exactly. It complies with Heisenberg's uncertainty because all these local orbitals, local orbitals are the real thing. Old, and this is new. They don't jump from here to there, they jump just like this. It's more local. The energy levels are, energy levels are more localized. I have here a graph showing you exactly, you get the blue one and the purple one, which are, say the purple one is indeed um, the numbers we know by heart, the numbers uh, provided by mainstream science, and the blue is uh, the weight of those things when you just count the outer spinning nucleon. So that complies exactly, the number of protons, as I said, uh, complies. So these are the actual shapes of atoms. Now, why can I do that? Why is a single man, a one-man operation with a zero budget, capable of creating the real atom model? And why are the big ones like CERN, like, like Fermilab, like NASA, Einstein, Newton, you name them, why aren't they capable and why can I do that shit? Just like that. Why? Well, let's do a practicalities one. And um, maybe with my intelligence. And uh, I am smart. Make no mistake about that, but I'm not the smartest guy on the planet. Uh, I've met uh, a lot of people, uh, men and women, smarter than me, or, or at least more uh, talented in certain ways. So, no, I think my level of intelligence is just right. It is, it, 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 it's those mathematical formulas are, are very bad in mathematicians, and I'm very, uh, I'm a very bad mathematician. I cannot solve those equations, but. So I, I have to go down to a more simplified level. And, and as it happens to be, the universe is a simplified, is a simple mechanism. So that's great. And I always have worked in mechanics and I, I, I got my first mechanical box at three years old. And, and uh, I've studied electronics and electrons are gravitons, which gives me an edge in that, that, there too. So everything together makes me capable of doing this. And these weren't, and you might think, yeah, the odds are against me. I know the odds are against me, but look at the numbers, they're right. So there's no question about it. I did what they didn't, and they couldn't do. And of course, uh, as you, uh, this is a simple diagram, a simple drawing. I have here the Holy Grail in the middle, and that's what we are looking for, right? How it really works on a, on a very small level. So that's the holy grail. But the thing is, and that's the dotted line, the thing is, we cannot look inside it. We have to look outside it and then combine those things, and then we can see what's inside there, right? We have to look to the outside, look at the out a big thing, and then we can, um, well, how do you call it in English? We can detect, we can detect, we can find the holy grail by looking at the things around it. And in my case, those things are uh, physical. I, I look at, 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 at uh, say, nucleons, and I know what, how this, why it looks like this. But I look at physical things, and I push those together, those nucleons, getting the exact at uh, the models. It's physical. But now, mathematicians, they have these formulas, all these kind of formulas. And you know what? With math, if you have one digit wrong, Normally, you can simplify those formulas, but if you have one digit wrong, it won't work. So that's the, the, they can't change those mathematical formulas, because if they did, they would lose their, yeah, their get ground. And the thing is, those formulas say this is, this, is, this is Newton, everything which Newton says in the formula. Well, mass and weight are not uh, related. 
Everybody says, yes, they are related, but no, they are not related. You can count the number of uh, total nucleons, and you can count the number of spinning nucleons on the outside. The spinning nucleons on the outside give me weight. The total number of nucleons give me mass, inertia. So they are not uh, related. You can look at that graph. Mass is a graph. Red bar is the mass, total number of nucleons, and you see the blue bar is the number of spinning nucleons exposed to the outer world, which happens to be the same as the purple bar, which is uh, which are uh, the the actual weight atomic weights of those elements by this mainstream science. So mainstream science and and, and I we we, we uh, yeah we agree on the weight of, of atoms. No problem, we agree on the weight, but we don't agree on the thing that mass and weight are uh, related, yes or no. So I say they're not related, but so that makes one mistake for mainstream science, they're not related. This thing proves it. Uh, then with Einstein, with his, uh, he says, Einstein says, well, um, gravity is a curvature of space time, and Einstein also says that mass and energy can turn into each other. I say, no, it's not at all possible. So Einstein's wrong too. And of course, mainstream has a few things right, but not all of them. And uh, as I said, one digit wrong, and you can't simplify the formula. So suppose this gives you uh, three uh, dimensions, and this gives you four, no? Then uh, if you can simplify it, you will end up with seven dimensions. And I, as I believe mainstream science really thinks the universe is made out of ten dimensions. But there are only three, but they can't simplify the formulas. Because they work with math, and so math isn't that... I think it's overrated math. It's important to can, you can calculate, add things, uh, but no, those I think they're really bogged down in the mathematical mud, and that's why Sir Paul Fermi cannot do that yet. Also, they can do what I do. You know, if I want to make an atom, I want, if I want to create a next layer, say I have here a uh, this is argon. Say I want to add a new layer. One, two, three, four, four like, and I can't fit it. Well, the only thing I have to do is turn it a bit, little, and then um, spread these two and close in these two, creating more of a diamond shape, and then it would fit. And that's what I do. It fits, and then I glue it on, and then it's it's fixed. Then you get uh, these. You see the red ones, mm -hmm. diamond shaped ones. That's very simple to do in real life, but you can't do that as a mathematician. So that's a benefit of being a bit more practical and just uh, drowning yourself in mathematical equations. So in short, this is why mainstream cannot do what I do. And, uh, and also a bit why I can do it. So that's it. Uh, that was what I had to say about mathematicians, about maths. Uh, um, next video is a bit more uh, interesting. Um, I've started out when um, um, I started out with a simple mechanism, and that me that mechanism of gravity uh, it contained a uh, this with spinning nucleon and loose gravitons interacting, and I used the cradle of Newton uh, to make say at a high velocity bouncing through each other, low velocity, and therefore keeping the spin, and the same equivalent of Newton I used for swimming against the incoming stream of gravitons. Well, that mechanism was great, and it was the only thing I could come up with, so that's a great mechanism. Um, and it helped me create those atoms, so it served its purpose. But now, uh, knowing a bit more about these atoms, I found the real reason why objects attract. So I'm going to change the very origin of my uh, project, of my model, but it doesn't change the outcome. It's just, it, it looks like a technicality, but uh, in reality it's a big thing. So um, I hope to see you next time. Thank you.